Hi there, my name is Megan Taylor and I'm a doctoral student at the Texas Center for Performing Arts Health where we study musicians' health. In light of COVID-19, we have expanded our work to create these videos for student musicians to learn about instrument hygiene. Later in this video, you will learn how to clean your instrument. For now, I would like to remind you of some of the personal hygiene habits that can help keep our instruments clean. I know this can feel like a lot um, of things to try to remember when you're trying to play your instrument, uh, but the good news is that we're all in this together. Talk with your classmates and your teachers about how you plan to keep yourself and others safe during band and orchestra class. Also, remember to ask your teachers if you have any questions or if you need any help with anything that you're about to see in the remainder of this video. From all of us here at the We Mean Clean Project, Thank you for watching and stay healthy. Hello, my name is Justin Cooper. My coworker, Ann McMillan, and myself run the University of North Texas Instrument Repair Shop. Our jobs are to provide repair services to the university students, the university owned instruments, and the surrounding community. In addition to this, we teach classes in brass and woodwind instrument repair and maintenance, as well as offer workshops and clinics for band directors and music educators. We are excited to be partnering with the Texas Center for Performing Arts Health and the Texas Academy of Math and Sciences to bring you these series of videos on how to properly clean your instruments at home. Please note that this type of cleaning does not sterilize or disinfect an instrument, but if done on a regular basis, will keep your instrument in good working order and free of harmful buildup. If you feel your instrument needs that kind of attention, we urge you to please reach out to your local music store or your band director for further guidance. We would also like to note that you need to follow the instructions very precisely. Any deviation from the instructions as outlined in the video could cause harm to your instrument or yourself, so please be advised. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in these videos, please feel free to reach out to either Anne or myself. We hope you find these videos very helpful and informative. Thanks. All right. This is how you would disassemble a French horn in order to be able to give it a bath or rinse it out at home um, before returning it to your band hall. Um, for a French horn, we're gonna leave the valves alone, the rotors, so don't touch any of the caps, uh, nor do you want to mess with any of these screws right here. The strings, the bumpers, all of this is fine to be submerged in water. It's not gonna hurt it at all. Um, and just the risk of losing anything or messing anything up with these rotors is just too great. So do not do anything with the valves, just leave the valves completely alone. Um, what we can do though is remove all of the tuning slides. Um, on French horn there's quite a few, so make sure you get them all. Um, if any of the tuning slides are stuck, which uh, is a good possibility, just leave them on um, the instrument. The instrument can be fully cleaned without removing the slides. It's just a little better job if we can get them out. Um, so try your best, but don't pull too hard. Don't try and force anything out. If it doesn't come out very easily, leave it alone, and we can just go straight on to the bathing process. Uh, make sure you check around here. Sometimes there's a slide right here. Sometimes there's a little slide right here. And make sure you get all of those tuning slides out. If the bell is a removable bell, um, just unscrew that. Um, otherwise, this is as far as you want to take a French horn apart in order to be able to give it a bath. So the French horn disassembled, now we can actually start the process of washing it out. As you can see, I'm in um, my bathroom. I'm gonna be utilizing my tub, but um, if you don't have access to a tub large enough for your instrument or just don't have access to a good tub, this can be done in any sort of container that's large enough to contain your French horn, a Rubbermaid tote, um, you know, a, a big trash can, anything that, that's, you know, obviously clean and big enough to hold your instrument. As you can see in my tub, I've put down a um, towel that is to protect both my tub from scratches and the instrument from scratches. Um, I certainly don't want to damage either one of these in, in the effort of, of trying to clean the instrument out. So just put something soft down to make sure that you're not going to harm the instrument or your tub. 
Uh, once you have um, your towel or whatever soft covering on the bottom of your container, you can just start assembly or um, rather putting the instrument on the towel very easily. Set it on there very nicely and just spread everything out. You don't want things on top of each other. You want everything to get touched by the soap and water as easily as it can. We've got a lot of slides for French horns, so just do your best to space them out as much as you can without any overlap on them at all. Just like so. Um, once you have everything laid out, then we're going to fill the tub up with warm water. You want to use water that um, is definitely warm, but not so warm that it's going to damage the instrument. Um, you need to think along the lines of uh, water temperature that's good for, um, you know, a family pet, a uh, younger brother or sister, you know, a small child. Um, so definitely with some heat on there, but uh, just a little bit above lukewarm. If you go too hot with the water, you're going to uh, strip lacquer off of the instrument. And even on this French horn that looks silver, it is actually lacquered nickel. Most French horns that have silver appearance are lacquered nickel. So even this horn will have lacquer come off of it. So make sure that you do not go too hot with the water. If you're not sure about it, go cooler. Um, it's not going to hurt it to go cooler, it's just maybe not going to be as effective. Um, but we really don't want to pull that lacquer off the instrument, especially if it's not your instrument, your, your school district's instrument. Um, they're not going to thank you for, um, for stripping that lacquer off. Um, in addition to the warm water, you also want to put some sort of soap in there. Um, I'm going to be using dish soap. Uh, dish soap is really great for this job. I've got Palmolive, but Dawn or any kind of brand that you have of dish soap is going to work great. Not only does it do a good job of helping us clean um, and remove, you know, deposits, but it cuts through all of the grease that gets left behind by our tuning slide grease and um, uh, valve oil and stuff like that, you know, grease from our hands on the outside of the instrument. So this is what we use in repair shops whenever we're cleaning instruments before they go into a chemical clean. We always give them a little bath and this is exactly what we use. Um, but don't use anything stronger than this, dish soap only. Uh, nothing else. Um, if you don't have dish soap, um, you can use, you know, body wash or stuff like that, but you don't want to go more powerful than dish soap, or again, we could harm the finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the water going, I'm going to pour some of this, this dish soap in, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the process with water. Alright, so now my tub is full of water. Um, and I'm ready to carry on with the next part of cleaning the instrument. Now, first off, you may have noticed that there's not enough water in here to cover the bell flare of the instrument, but that's perfectly fine. You only need to worry about covering uh, the working part of the instrument, the tuning slide tubes, um, the valves, uh, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Everything where we would expect um, our saliva to condensate, to gather, collect, and leave stuff behind. That's what we're really worried about. And the bell flare itself, while we touch it a lot, so it has a lot of our, our sweat um, and, and grease from our hands on there, it's not gonna get a lot of stuff from our mouths, which is what we're really concerned with here. Um, we will wipe that down in a second, but again, not necessary that you cover that up. Once you have the tub um, full of water, we do wanna make sure that we actually get the instrument itself full of water. Um, as French horn players, you'll all be familiar with the concept of emptying water out of your horn by spinning the horn. We actually need to do that in reverse to make sure that we actually get this nice, warm, soapy water getting in all of the instrument. There's no air bubbles, air pockets, or places where the instrument, even though being fully submerged, is not in contact with water. So what I'll do is I'll start with the body of the instrument and just grab it. You can kind of scoop it. And just like this, turn it so that that water goes all the way through here and starts circling around. You really just have to do that one time. That should be enough for the body of the instrument. But then with the tuning slides themselves, you'll see that one just had a whole bunch of uh, bubbles come out of it. You can spin those under the water in an effort to get all of the air pockets out of them as well. 
So you want to do that with all of them, even the ones that don't have as many loops on them, they can get air bubbles stuck in them as well. So let's go through, do all of that real quick. And now that we are confident that we've got water in all sections of the tuning slides and the instrument itself, we're going to let the instrument set for about 10 to 15 minutes. I would give it 15 minutes if you possibly can, if you have that amount of time. Um, we want this to really soak, just like soaking dishes in the sink. You know, you're going to let that set for a little while so it can soften up all of this hardened stuff, you know, on your pots and pans, your plates and bowls. It's going to be the same thing with the instrument here. We want to give this water and this soap time to start eating it at these hard deposits and softening them up. Um, so give it about 15 minutes and then you're going to come back and um, we'll, we'll um, brush out the interior of the instrument, wipe off the exterior of the instrument, do everything we can to get it nice and working. So at this point, I'm going to skip ahead and pretend that we've had 15 minutes of soak time um, so I can show you what we would do after it is soaked for 15 minutes. So once you're done with your 15 minutes and you're ready to start scrubbing the instrument, there's a couple of options you have. Um, it would be ideal if you had something like this. This is called a brush uh, snake, a tube brush, um, just all sorts of different names it goes by. Um, but these are sold in music stores. A lot of times they come in um, care and maintenance packages. If you bought one of those whenever you got your instrument, some manufacturers even include these when you get a brand new instrument as just part of buying the instrument. Uh, so if you have one of these, that's really going to be very helpful because what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, nylon bristle brushes and run them through all of the tuning slides, down all of these tuning slide tubes that go into the valves, and about every opening that we can get it on the instrument. Now that we've let this set for the 15 minutes, um, we softened everything up, but just like those dishes in our sink, just softening it up isn't enough. You've actually got to go in there with a brush and scrub at it a little bit to try and break that stuff and get it out. So I'll show you how to use this. So you're going to take it. Um, if you've still got some soap left over, um, bring that over, put a little bit of soap on your brush. That's just going to make it that much more effective. And then just put it in all of these tubes on these chimney slides. You can brush back and forth just like this. Get yourself a nice little scrubbing motion going, and you're going to do that on every single one of these tuning slides. Make sure you're getting it on both sides. Some of the tuning slides, you'll be able to push it all the way through from one side to the other, um, and some you will not. Um, especially the more curly cued ones, um, you know, like these slides over here, it's not going to be as easy to push that all the way through. Or the ones that are really tight and compact, the brush is not going to want to go around that corner. So for those, just go in uh, on each side of the slide and do that scrubbing motion as much as you can. Uh, important note, do not force this in. Um, if this brush is not going in easily for you, um, if it's too big, too small, if you're getting it around to a corner and you won't feel like it'll almost go around, don't force it. The ends of these brushes can come off inside of the instrument, and if that happens, it's going to have to go to the shop, and it's probably going to be expensive to replace. So don't force these in. Just do the best you can with it. And um, like I said, do that for all the tuning slide tubes, and we also want to do that on the instrument itself. So we're going to go into all of these tubes that are connected to the valve section itself. And you can do this with it in the water. You can pick it up and do it, you know, above the surface of the water. It's not going to make a great difference one way or the other uh, to the effectiveness of it. We're just going back and forth like that to get all that out um, on every single one of those tubes on the front and on the back and down the lead pipe. If you do not have a snake, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's not going to be quite as effective, but you still can... Um, you know, do this a little bit just by getting the tuning slides and shaking them back and forth very quickly like that. Um, the hope is that the agitation of the water is going to help us break some of that stuff up in the absence of a brush or anything like that. So I would do that with all of the tuning slides and then with the actual body of the instrument itself, just being very careful not to hit it on the sides of the tub. Um, or whatever container you're in. 
Um, once you have done all of that, um, you can empty the water and then you're going to need to rinse the instrument out. Um, you can do that either with, you know, your spigot on your tub, um, a garden hose, you know, whatever you have available. You just want to make sure we get all of this stuff that we broke up with our brush and the soaking out of the instrument, uh, along with all of the soap. We don't want to leave any of that soap residue behind because that can cause its own issues. Um, so rinse it out very thoroughly. Um, also make sure that whenever you're taking this out, again, you'll be used to this part, but spin everything to make sure we get all of the water out. Um, that goes, you know, after you rinse it out, all of that stuff. Um, once you get to that part and you've got all the water emptied out, you rinse everything out, set the instrument on a towel, let it dry air dry. Don't try and do anything. Don't try and get a hair dryer, air compressor, you know, leaf blower to kind of blow it dry. Just leave it alone. So let it set for about an hour to air dry and then we will go on and I'll show you how to reassemble your horn after that point. Now that the French horn is clean, we can begin the reassembly process. Uh, it's going to be basically the same or, or reverse of the breakdown process, but we just need to make sure that we do a couple of things to keep the horn working well and keep corrosion from setting back in after uh, soaking it in water. Um, so the first thing that you will need to get or have is some sort of rotor oil. Um, you can see this is clearly marked rotor oil. If you don't have actual rotor oil, valve oil of any kind will do just fine. Um, we're going to put these on the rotors to keep the rotors from seizing up. If you don't have any valve oil or rotor oil, then you can leave the rotors dry. It's not preferable, but um, we don't want to put anything on there that's not meant for a musical instrument. So if you don't have valve oil or rotor oil, just leave them dry and skip this step. Um, but since if we do, and since I do, I'll show you how to apply it. Um, you actually want to go in through the tuning slide tubes and put a couple of drops in each one and then just work the valves back and forth like that. My valves are a little stuck, but that's okay. If the valves are stuck and not moving fine, do not try and force them. Just use uh, regular pressure and if they don't move, then that's something that will have to be taken care of. Um, at a repair shop. So just work the rotor in just like that and that should be more than enough. Like I said, a couple of drops in each tube, two or three drops, and that'll be good to go. Um, now for the tuning slides, once we've oiled everything up, we want to put our tuning slides back in. Um, you're going to need tuning slide grease. Um, this is just one container. This is a Bach tuning slide grease. There's tons of stuff out there. But the most important thing is you use something that is actually meant for a musical instrument. Don't use anything from your garage, from your kitchen, or anything else. Um, it, it has to be formulated specifically for this, or it can actually wind up causing things to seize up and get stuck in place altogether. If you don't have a tuning slide grease meant for a musical instrument, don't put the tuning slides back in. What we can do with the tuning slides in that case is simply get a towel, a paper cloth, or something nice and soft, set it down on your table or your workspace or wherever you're at, and just take the slides and start wrapping the slides up in that. Uh, for French horn, you got a lot of slides, so I might need a little bit more paper towel than I've got here, but that's fine. Um, what we're gonna do is once we have these all wrapped up, we're just gonna put them in the case or if there's not room in the case, then we will find some place, put it in a you know, freezer bag, a Walmart bag, something like that, um, in order to keep the tuning slides safe. Once you have them all wrapped up, you can just kind of close the ends of your paper towel or whatever, and then just use a little bit of tape, uh, painter's tape, duct tape, scotch tape, whatever you have handy to kind of tape that to keep it closed. And like I said, it can either go into a compartment um, on the case if there's room for this, or just put it in a uh, freezer bag and just kind of carry it alongside the case. But we don't want to put the tuning slides back in without grease because they can get stuck. Um, the, the bare metal will um, 
corrode up very quickly and that would cause the slides to get stuck, which is gonna be a more expensive repair whenever it does wind up going to a, a repair shop to get fully serviced. Um, so, you know, do as many packs as you need. If you can get it all in one pack, I didn't have enough, but uh, you know, get some more, I would get some more uh, um, paper towel and wrap these up. Same thing, tape it all up and put it in that um, freezer bag, Walmart bag, whatever you can have to kind of close up and uh, put next to the case of the instrument. Um, but since I've got the tuning slide grease, I will show you how to apply that in the proper way to make sure it gets distributed where it needs to get. So, you simply want to take your tuning slide grease and put a line all the way around the very end of the inner tuning slide tubes. So just like this, get that to focus, get it to focus, there we go. Um, you can see a nice thick line going pretty much all the way around each one of those inner tuning slide tubes. Then, simply put in one tube at a time to distribute that grease across the tubes and then you can put both tubes in together and that is that. Now with French horn you're going to want to be very particular about putting the slides back in the right place. Um, there are a lot of slides and they're all pretty close um, in size and shape to each other. Um, and But if we put them back in the right place, or in the wrong place rather, the horn is not going to work correctly. Um, the um, shorter slides are always going to go on the back set of tubes. So these tubes kind of back here, if I'm looking at it from the front of the horn. Um, and then you just have to remember with your first and third, um, the shorter one goes on the first bow slide and then the longer one goes on the third. And that's just gonna help keep the tuning consistent um, and well, right. Um, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. If you get them mixed up, it's not the end of the world, um, but the next time someone tries to play the horn, um, it will not work. Uh, or will not play, rather, um, the right pitches. Um, it's easy to, to figure out once you know it's a problem, but just if you keep track of the tuning slides, it will help you avoid that problem altogether. So if you have the tuning slide grease, um, if it's a, an actual paste or, um, or, you know, a cream type thing instead of being more liquid based, um, just use your finger to grab some out of the tube and then rub it around uh, the end of the tube that way. Um, and also be careful or um, be cognizant rather of the fact that some slides are reversed, like this has inner tuning slide tube and outer tuning slide tube right here. So you'll need to put the grease on the inner tuning slide tube that is on the horn. So right here. And same application, you just put it all the way around or as best you can given your level of access to the area just all the way around like that and down here and work it in and you'll be good to go. Um, not every French horn is going to have reversed slides like that. It's typically only uh, one of the main tuning slides if it does have it, but just watch out for that and make sure you get the grease in the right place. Um, but anyhow, that's about it. Grease them all up, put them in, or like I said, if you don't have the grease, just wrap them up in a nice soft paper towel or something like that and put them to the side so that they can be put in with grease at a later time.